as a scientist and as a physicist. I'm sure since our last lecture, we will still be wondering what are the constituents of light that we see in the lightness? Where are the light for stars coming from? What about thunderstorm? Every time there is thunderstorm, there is brightness. The light from sun, where is it coming from? All of these questions will be answered by discussing this small and important aspect of physics. Please pay attention while I discuss it. Plasma was first used as a term by an American chemist. His name is Harvey Langmore. He used the term to describe ionized gas in 1927 and he won Nobel Prize for his efforts in plasma research. Back then, he was investigating the physics and chemistry of tungsten bulbs with a view to increase his lifespan. After Langmore's intervention, plasma research started growing in leaves and bones. Hence, the need to have full understanding of it. Although, plasma is also used in biology and health sciences to describe the content of the blood. Almost 70% of blood is classified as plasma. But our concern here as physicists is to study plasma as a state of matter. Having established this fact, let us dive into the discussion about plasma as the fourth state of matter. Thank you. I promised to treat plasma separately as a state of matter because of its uniqueness and application in the area of illumination. Here we are. I am now treating the subject because it is very special. What is plasma? Plasma is the first state of matter. And of course, we have treated liquid, solid, and gas. So just next after gas is plasma. I recall that all these matters are capable of existing in more than one state. That is, you could have liquid. Liquid can go into gas, solid can move into liquid. And all of this can happen by the application of heat, excessive heat. So if you boil water to a certain extent, you begin to receive gas. So also, if you boil ice block, it will also turn to water. Although I had to use this example because it is very simple, and it is what we can relate with easily. But other substances can also be heated and changed from one position to the other. Even iron. Iron can be heated at a very high temperature. It will turn to liquid. Uh, it can happen to any substance at all. But the amount of heat and the amount of energy required to break down the atom in all of these substances are different. Similarly, when you go further to apply massive heat to some already formed gas or vapor of some substances, it will start to exhibit some funny characteristics which suggest that you now have the very basic indivisible particle of an element called atoms being under transformation. But recall that as we discussed earlier, Atom is the smallest indivisible particle of an element. It then means that very sensitive heat will begin to knock out electron out of the atom that made up the substance. This will create free electron and positive ions. Let me say here that this chemical transformation is elementary knowledge that every physicist and chemist are adequately familiar with. All these electrons and ions are positively and negatively charged, but overall, Plasma is neutral because the result of the reaction has resulted in equal amount of positively and negatively charged particles. This separation of electron is the unique characteristics that enable plasma to be able to conduct electricity. So, it practically becomes a conductor of electricity. And of course, this is one of the reasons I had to leave this topic and treat it separately. And you will recall that I said that I will be treating some of the astrophysics area and space physics. So the implication of this is if plasma is conducting electricity, what's really our interest is because some plasma occur naturally as stars. And of course the lightning that I've been talking about, not knowing the source, is actually made of plasma. Even our great star sun, sun has close to about 99% of plasma. So all the shiny light we see when we put our head up at night, we are 
practically looking at the uh, plasma. Now you know. But terrestrially, coming back home, there are quite a number of other important applications that plasma is used for around us. And the very most prominent and important one is the fluorescent lamp, the age-long processing lamp. And all of the low-cost lamp we use these days. And it will interest you to also know that all of our disco lights, entertainment lightning, and every other neon light that you see out there is made out of plasma technology. And of course, these are very simple technology. I'm also looking forward to a future where I'm going to do some demonstration and of course, uh, do-it-yourself uh, program on all this so that you can be more familiar.